Okay, it is 11 o'clock. Good morning. This is Jesse Meckling, uh, the Director of Education from the Center for Coastal Studies in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Uh, and this is our 11 o'clock Facebook Live, Cool Marine Animals I Have Seen. Uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And keeping with our theme, this week's themes of all things great and small. Uh, yesterday, we talked about a small little fish. Today, we're going to talk about uh, a very large animal, one of the largest in the ocean. Um, the largest of its kind, in fact, the animal that possesses the largest brain of any animal on the planet, equal to um, the weight of two grown humans, an animal, an animal that is an iconic image of an entire um, group of animals, um, especially when a group, uh, namely whales. You think of whales, you you many times think of this animal. Um, and an animal that's steeped in the history of the United States, particularly New England. Of course, I am talking about the great um, and powerful sperm whale. And we will pull down the presentation to get us going. Um, so sperm whales are cetaceans. Uh, of course, they are odontocetes or tooth whales. They're the largest tooth whale. Um, as I mentioned, they have the largest brain of any animal. They are listed as vulnerable by the IUCN, but a Mediterranean population of them is actually listed as endangered. Um, vision, visions of sperm whales doing battle with giant squid from great ocean depths have been with us for ages, um, even adorning many of the covers of books I have in my office. Uh, in Moby Dick, uh, they were vengeful, bloodthirsty animals intent on bringing down whalers, but the truth is these are highly social um, and uh, gentle leviathans with tremendous acoustic ability. They dive deeper than almost any other marine mammal. And those epic fights deep below the sea between sperm whales and giant squid that um, most of us have in our minds um, are most likely not really fights, but rather one-sided meals for the sperm whales. Uh, sperm whales live throughout the world's oceans. Uh, as you can see here from this map, uh, females and young males uh, live in uh, family groups, while large uh, males um, live solitary except for during mating. Um, younger males will form bachelor groups and live um, sometimes together near coasts. Um, one such bachelor group, which lives off the, the east coast of the South Island of New Zealand, in a town called Kaikoura, is where I first saw um, uh, sperm whales a few decades ago. I recently saw sperm whales in the Mediterranean on the Straits of Gibraltar um, a few years ago. These are pelagic animals that usually live in deep water over a thousand meters or 3,300 feet um, because they dive down deep to, to um, get their main prey, which is various uh, species of squid. Uh, these are long-lived animals. They can live up to 70 years. And sperm whales have been recorded diving to 2,250 meters or 7,400 feet just about 7,400 feet and up to 90 minutes, which is um, the, the, not the deepest. Um, it's only surpassed by the elephant seal, uh, which we talked about last a few weeks ago, and the Cuvier's beaked whale, which is the deepest diving marine mammal. Uh, sperm whales are sexually dimorphic with males being much larger than females. Males can reach lengths of 20.7 um, meters or 67 feet and weigh up to 51,000 kilograms or 114,000 pounds. Mature female sperm whales average only about 10.6 uh, to 11 meters, uh, 35 to 36 feet, and generally don't grow much larger than 12 meters or 39 feet. Um, there are old whaling records that put sperm whales, uh, sperm whale lengths much larger, um, over um, 24 meters or 80 feet. And it's, in fact, um, reported that the whale, the sperm whale that rammed and sunk the whale ship Essex, of which the book Moby Dick is based, was reportedly 26 meters or 85 feet long. Um, these sizes of whales we don't see today, um, and it's hard to know how accurate they were in measuring back in the 19th century, uh, but there were reports of much la larger whales at that time. Sperm whales um, are one of the most known of all cetacean species among the public, most likely due to the fact that they're one of the most persecuted, persecuted um, cetacean species of all time. Uh, New Englanders began hunting sperm whales in the early 1700s. 
uh, led by whalers from uh, the island of Nantucket. Um, in addition to the blubber, um, which can be quite thick in sperm whales, up to 16, up to 31 centimeters, um, uh, the whalers went after um, a very fine, rich oil that was found in the head of the whale, uh, which old whales called spermaceti. Um, it's not exactly sure why they thought that um, this white, liquidy, um, viscous uh, oil was was related to sperm being in the head of the whale, but that was the name, and that's where the name of the whale comes from. Uh, this very fine oil led to deaths of tens of thousands of these animals, and later hundreds of thousands um, um, in the in the twentieth century. The oil was burned with no smoke or foul smell. And because it has a low freezing point, was actually used in the aerospace industry um, in the 20th century, as well as the automotive industry in the, in the 20th century. It wasn't until 1972 um, that um, we stopped using sperm whale oil when they were listed on the Endangered Species Act. Um, the spermaceti comes from the spermaceti organ, which is located in the head or the melon of the whale. You can see here from the skeleton um, that the melon, I don't know if you'll be able to see my cursor, no, I don't think so. Um, but the melon is the front part of this, the whale. Um, the skeleton looks, if you think of what a sperm whale looks like, it looks kind of strange. Um, that that area above the upper jaw is the melon. Um, and this is in the upper part of that is where the spermaceti organ is located. Um, and whales use this for echolocation and communication. Um, sperm whales are the loudest animals in the world. In fact, their whole life is superlatives, largest brain, loudest animal, one of the deepest diving, largest animals, predator with teeth. Um, they're even louder than blue whales. Uh, they're capable of producing sounds at 230 decibels. That's louder than a jet taking off and uh, equivalent to the Saturn V rocket blasting off at uh, one meter away. This incredible sound was once believed to be used to stun prey um, of the squid that they primarily hunt. Although recent research has found that this is probably not the case, um, they might use the sound at long distances to find um, their prey in the dark depths of the ocean. And as they get closer, they'll use more frequent clicks of echolocation um, as other tooth whales do um, uh, to catch their prey. Uh, it's thought that they use a suction method of eating their food. Uh, and of course, prime, uh, sperm whales primarily eat squid. Uh, many different species, not just giant squid. Um, and in fact, it's estimated that um, the roughly three to 450,000 sperm whales worldwide eat um, close to half a million tons of squid, which is about a tenth of the global squid fishery catch worldwide. Sperm, sperm whales are incredibly social animals. Um, as I mentioned, females live together with young males. Males will, um, uh, and females stay together their whole lives. Males will stay with their family groups um, up until the age of 20 or 21 years old. Uh, but some males might take off as early as the age of four, I guess, similar to um, other species and similar to humans. There, there's different individuals that will leave earlier. Um, and males um, will form, these young males will form bachelor pods, while larger bull males will, will roam solitarily um, throughout the oceans uh, until they come back for mating. They're sometimes seen in pods of up to 50 individuals. Uh, females give birth every three to five years. Uh, the gestation is quite long. Um, um, for most cetaceans, 14 to 16 months. Um, and sperm whales, incredibly, have been found to exhibit um, multi-level structural behavior, uh, which are characterized by different uh, cultural behaviors. These are actually whales. Um, what that means is that these different groups or clans of sperm whales um, in the same geographic area um, will differ in behaviors such as di diving and foraging and time at the surface. Um, and they'll also different, uh, differ in, the, in how they speak to each other. Um, their uh, cliques or codas um, distinguish um, individuals and, and are distinguished among clans of, of these animals. So when um, family groups get together, in larger clan groups, um, they're able to communicate among these clan groups using their own dialect. It seems that 
Sperm whales know who their family and friends are even after long periods of time. Sometimes these family groups and clans don't get together or these clans don't get together um, until long periods of time and the sperm whales are able to distinguish among individuals using their different cliques and, uh, or codas. Sperm whales were once the most persecuted uh, animals in history. Uh, actually, perhaps they are the most persecuted animal in history. Um, it's estimated that over uh, three quarters of a million of them were killed in the 20th century uh, for that really rich, fine oil. In addition to the um, over 300,000 killed in the 18th and 19th centuries during the historic days of whaling. So over one million of these animals have been killed. Uh, these animals are now protected worldwide, but their population is probably less than a third or a quarter of what it once was. Uh, major threats to these animals today include noise pollution, uh, because these animals use sound to find food and communicate, um, they're very susceptible to high levels of noise pollution um, from ships and offshore development, um, as well as uh, sonar from, from um, used by the Navy. Um, ship strikes, fishing entanglements, uh, and the effects of climate change to habitats and, and potentially their food sources are all other threats to these animals. And more recently, we've seen another threat, and that's the ingestion of plastic. Um, there have been a number of reports of sperm whales washing up. Um, more and more sperm whales wash up on the shores with um, large amounts of plastic inside their stomach. Um, last spring, there was a pregnant female sperm whale that washed up in, on the coast of Italy with, um, with 22 uh, kilograms or about 50 pounds of plastic in its stomach. And just recently in Scotland, a young uh, male sperm whale washed up with over 100 kilograms or uh, just over 220 pounds of plastic in it. Uh, so this is a, a growing problem for these animals. So I'm just about out of time for today. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about. Um, as I said, I could probably spend an hour talking about these amazing, amazing animals. But one last cool thing I'll leave you with, um, um, and that is uh, that we all or most of us probably know about because it's on TV and they even made movies about it, the, the huge uh, ancient prehistoric shark that roamed the oceans called Megalodon. Um, but did we know that there was actually a large version of a uh, large sperm whale ancestor, larger than Megalodon, probably hunted Megalodon, that just like today, the orc is the top predator um, in ancient seas, the Leviathan was the top predator um, its uh, remains have been found, fossil remains have been found with teeth measuring up to 31 centimeters or 12 in inches, the longest teeth um, of any known animal ever. So just like in today's oceans, the cetaceans are the top predators uh, in the ancient seas, the um, cetaceans were the top predators as well. So thank you all. I'm out of time. I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you come back tomorrow. Um, I hope you enjoy this talk, and, and I hope to see you, uh, well, I don't see you, but I hope you uh, come back tomorrow uh, for another cool marine animal I have seen. Um, have a great day, stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for joining me.